It's time to start Project Banshee 2.0. This is my 1990 Yamaha Banshee, and if you're in the off-road world, you probably know what a Yamaha Banshee is. Two cylinders, two stroke, 350. They make a crazy sound, very iconic machine, and they're almost unarguably the best platform to make a drag racing quad out of. Now, my quad's undergone quite a bit of transformation and had quite a bit of modifications. If you guys are interested in seeing a detailed build series on this thing, I'll link that video in the pinned comment below. So definitely check that out if you want to see the history of this machine in particular and see the evolution of it. But we're going to be entirely changing this thing from the look, the chassis, and the engine setup. So in this video, I'm going to go over the current condition, what I liked about the parts I chose, and the parts that I didn't like also. We'll also be going over the plans for the new build, weighing the machine, going through some of the parts that we already have, and then we're going to crack into this thing and start working on it. Now, it's been four years since the original restoration of this Banshee, and it's undergone two different transformations. The first time around was basically a full-off restoration. I built it with a Chinese top-end kit, and that blew up pretty much instantly. And then the second time around, I turned it into a 421 stroker, and it's been that way for about three years. Now, in its entirety, the Banshee is a great machine. The thing is super fast, but overall, what I've noticed is that this thing is great in the straight line, and that's about it. It gives you a lot of fatigue. Like it just beats you up. It's a heavy machine. The steering feels very heavy. And we really noticed it a lot when we did the TRX 250R versus the Banshee. The Banshee just beats you up. And like, dude, in the hot laps and stuff, you could go really fast on this thing, but you just couldn't do it for long. And if you could ride it for long, you could ride a different machine longer. It's just, it's a super heavy and just, man, it just beats the hell out of you. Now, a good portion of why this thing beats you up so bad is probably because of the suspension. These are Elka Stage 1s, and I got them with the machine. So I didn't even have the money to rebuild these things, so I literally cleaned them up and put them right back on the machine. And I'd be willing to bet that these came out of the box brand new, probably in the late 90s or early 2000s. They were put on the quad, and they've been that way ever since. So I have no idea what they're set up for, and they're super bouncy. Like they're bouncier than a 1990 GMC Suburban with no struts in the back and about a ton of bricks rolling down the streets of Detroit. I mean, I'm telling you, this thing, it, it, the suspension is just totally whooped. I mean, when I took this thing to the sand dunes, dude, when I would get it up to like third gear, not even, you just going over wavy sand, it was bottoming out. Like the skid plate was skidding on the sand. It's totally trashed. And because I had never had good suspension up until that, until that point, I didn't even realize how bad it was. So I have big plans for the suspension. That's going to be totally redone. And then looking over the rest of the quad, the tires, I did put air in that one. These tires are great though, man. I, I mean, for the amount of time that's on these, they're in really good shape. I mean, I will say they're super hard. They're Mass FX tires, and I paid 155 bucks for them. Brand new shipped. I mean, that's really hard to beat. I will say the performance could be better, and a lot of that has to do with just look how hard this rubber is. A lot of tires, like when I get hole shots and stuff, they're really gooey and rubbery. And even after just a couple of rides, they have more wear than these have had in their entire lifespan. But for somebody who's on a budget and looking for something that's gonna last a long time that makes okay performance, these are a great option, man. I've had these things on the street for a good portion of time too. When I ride up in the coal mines, there are portions of trail where you have to ride on the street for like, you know, a couple miles to get to the next part of the trail. And you can see, I mean, they're rounded over a little bit and they're, they're not really chunked at all though. But again, they're just, they're really, really hard. So they, they're gonna last like forever if you decide to purchase those. They're just not the best performance. So for like a recreational rider or somebody that rides on the street a lot, and doesn't want to get street tires, these are probably a pretty good option. So I would give those a thumbs up for $155. You just, you really can't beat that. Some other notable things on this machine are the plastics. So these are Meyer aftermarket plastics. Uh, I made a video explaining the differences between these and OEM. And a lot of people ask me if I would still recommend them. And I would, I would say they're a thumbs up. And uh, why I would still give them a thumbs up, there's, I'll explain the differences. So first off, if you notice in here, these edges are a little bit flared out and rounded. So you're not gonna get as sharp of edges as you would get with OEM. There's like, they have like more of a rounded look in a lot of different areas, but it's stuff that a normal person isn't really gonna notice. Uh, this area, you can see a reinforced where it kind of comes up here and here. On the OEM ones, they're more square and they kind of look a little bit cleaner. But it, for, the, for, the, for the regular person, like I said, you're not even gonna notice that. And one of the other things that I noticed with these is if you've ever had a blue Yamaha, you know about the white stress marks that really look like crap. And these sort of do have them. You can kind of see it back here, but these seem to be much more resilient than OEM plastics. Now I haven't rolled this machine, at least I can't remember. 
I don't think I've ever rolled this thing. So it has never, you know, that's when you would get a lot of stress marks, but I've had dirt bikes leaning against it. There's been things leaning against it. They've sat outside, you know, they're, they've seemed to be very resistant to fading and they seem to be resistant to those stress marks. So that's a thumbs up. And the other thing that's nice about Meyer, if you get OEM, you're going to get those ugly either depressions or I think on the Banshee, they actually stick out where the warning labels go. I hate those things. And even if you get a custom, you know, like one of those, uh, like aluminum plates on there or billet, whatever. I still, I just hate those things. So you don't have those with the Meyer plastics. And that's really nice. So that's two things you're gonna, it's a trade off, you know what I mean? I think the OEM, you're gonna have a better fit and finish and they're just, you know, nicer quality, I would say. But these are definitely plenty, plenty durable and you don't have those stupid warning things. So it's a trade off. I would say they're thumbs up. They're good. Good plastics. One of the other mods that get a lot of questions are, are these headlights. Now, these are aftermarket headlights. I made a video on these things a couple years ago and people went crazy over it. They wanted to do the same modification. Now, mine are great, man. I've never had a problem with these things. But what I saw in the comments was a lot of people would get these and they'd blow out. So I think what the main issue is, is that these are Chinese headlights. You know, these were like, if I remember correctly, I think these were like $16 for the pair. Super, super cheap. And when you get really cheap parts like that, especially from China, there's gonna be inconsistencies. One, because they all look the same. There's like hundreds of vendors with these things. So it's, chances are they're being made in different factories. So you're gonna have inconsistencies with the lights. They all claim to put out the same amount of, they have the same output, same wattage and everything, but I don't think that they truly do. So I think the problem was some people were getting lesser quality ones and they were blowing out, especially when you get up into the RPMs and your stator has more output. So I don't have these things. I don't have like a DC conversion. I don't have a battery or anything. I just hook these directly into the factory wire harness and it runs off the stator. I've never had an issue with these things, dude. It's been four years. I've had them on plenty of times. I've had the RPMs screaming and they've never blown out. So for mine, I give them a thumbs up, but you just have to try to get a good quality set, I guess. A lot of people ask me about these rock guards. These are really hard to find. I don't know if you can still get these. If I can still find the rock guards, I'll hop on eBay and get a link for those. I'll get a link for the headlights too, guys, but don't kill me, man. I got these things four years ago and I can't guarantee that you'll be able to get the same pair. So I'm gonna try to find ones that are just like these and I'll link them below. But uh, you gotta get those at your own risk though, man. It seems like I don't know, maybe 60, 60, 60 out of 60, 40, the people that said they had success doing these and then the other people got junk pairs. So unfortunately for a cheap mod like that, that's 20 bucks, it kind of just is what it is. And if it isn't obvious, this quad does have a wider stance than normal. In the front, we've got the plus two, plus one Fireball J-Arms. They've been pretty good, man. I, I can't really complain about those. And yes, it is a J-Arm. So if you don't know what those are, from 87 to 90, the Yamaha Banshee ran a J-Arm and then they switched it over to an A-Arm in 1991, which is a better design. This is an obsolete design. And yes, I could upgrade and put A-Arms, but I like keeping my stuff unique and I think J-Arms are cool. So we're gonna rock it. We're gonna keep those, although we're not gonna be running these J-Arms. I'm gonna be changing up the format, but we're gonna get into the build a little bit later on, like I said, but those are good Fireball plus twos. And then in the back, we've got a Dora, a Dora Blue plus two, plus four that came on the machine. I cleaned it up. You know, it's been a good solid axle. I haven't had any, issue, any issues there. Now, before I get any further, I'm going to estimate that there are about 45 or 50 hours on this quad. I had an hour meter right here. And at some point in time, you can actually see the back of it is still on there. And here's the wire that connected to it. At some point in time, that fell off. I have no idea where that ended up. But like I said, I would estimate about 40, 45, somewhere between 40 and 50 hours, I would say, are on this thing. Just to give you guys a gauge of about how many hours are on the machine. Now, as far as controls go, uh, these are the bars that came with it. I'm gonna be switching that up. I have an Alba Plus 2 steering stem. That was something that I added. No problems with that. Uh, I took off that hydraulic clutch. If you guys saw for a little bit there, I was running a hydraulic clutch. I do not recommend the hydraulic clutch, man. It's way better with a regular cable, no doubt. So I'll be getting new levers and things like that, but this was a solid setup. I think it feels good. I have an old school Denton steering stabilizer on here, which is pretty much, I don't know, man. I feel like stick stabilizers are kind of worthless. So, and it makes, it just makes the steering tighter, it seems. I don't know but I'm gonna be changing that out with a GPR, man. It's gonna be freaking sweet. But anyways, moving on from that, I think the other notable thing would be the foot pegs. These are integrated into the Nerf bars. These are nice, nice Nerf bars, man. The problem is these old school, I believe these are AC, these old school integrated aluminum foot pegs, they wear out really quickly. Aluminum foot pegs just don't last like the steel ones do. 
and then you can't replace these. So, I mean, these are okay. They look okay, but you shouldn't be able to do this. I'm pressing down too. These are soft. And when your, your hand can slide on your foot pegs like that, your boots are sliding too. If you've ever foot, put your hand on aggressive foot pegs or even just new stock foot pegs, you shouldn't be able to do this. They, uh, your hand should be all cut up. And these are, these are like smooth and rounded. So I have a whole new setup that we're gonna be doing there. But that was another complaint of this machine is your feet would just be slipping around on it. Now, as far as the motor goes, I mean, the thing is a powerhouse, there's no doubt. It makes a lot of power. You know, I understand that there's super fast Banshees out there, but for regular quads and bikes, man, a 421 Banshee is just super fast. So the thing is a beast, there's no doubt, but it's definitely not set up correctly. This was my first performance build that I ever did, and I would do things entirely differently. I think the number one thing that I would change is probably the pipes. Those are solid pipes, they're SLPs. Uh, the build quality is really good. They're super solid. They use a really thick gauge of steel and they're heavy. I remember weighing them against the FMFs and it's just a heavier pipe. So really solid construction. If you check out the silencer, you can see how long it is. They're very quiet. So if you're looking for a quieter system, you might want to check out SLP. Now, granted, your pipe needs to be, it, your, your whole setup really is what matters. It's not just, it doesn't necessarily mean that this pipe is not good, but for this setup, it didn't run well. And, uh, you know, it just didn't match my porting design and stuff. I have the Assassin porting in there. It's not, the engine isn't, I didn't port the engine. It's just that the port heights are for mid, the mid range. And for whatever reason, the power comes on late and it drops off early, very narrow power band. And it's, it's kind of unusable. So it's fun to ride. It's pretty violent. I just wish that it would scream a little bit higher. So I think for this one, that's probably the major thing that I would change. We're gonna be tired and doing the motor entirely differently. So there's plenty of changes coming there. As you can see, there's plenty of dirt on this thing. The last time I put this thing away, I didn't do a very good job cleaning it and kept putting it off. And now it's, uh, it's like literally 18 degrees out. So I'm just gonna have to deal with that and work with a dirty quad. Now I could go into detail for hours about each and every little component on this machine and what I would recommend and what I wouldn't, but we'll probably be doing that along the way. So the first thing I wanna do before we get to tearing this thing down, cause I have a heap of parts, man. I'm ready to start building this thing. I wanna weigh the machine. So you'll see here, I've got not only one, but four scales. Now why would a person have four scales? Well, the truth is I need to weigh myself incessantly throughout the day. So I bought one for every room in the house. Actually, the reason I got four scales is because I'm gonna try to put them under each tire. And in theory, we should be able to add up the weights and see what this quad weighs. The goal of this thing, because it beats you up so bad and it's just the steering is really heavy and everything, one of the things that I wanna do is really lighten up the machine. I wanna free up a lot of weight, especially in the front end. So I think it'll be cool to weigh the machine now, do the build, and then at the end, we'll see how much weight we lost or gained. Who knows? So comments in the comment section below what you think this thing weighs, and let's get to weighing it now. Now I've heard of people doing this before, and apparently it does work. It might be a little difficult because you have to like stomp on these things to activate them, and then they time out. So we're gonna have to try to do it before they time out. I'm gonna guess that this quad weighs 424 pounds. All right, I think I figured out a way. So you put the quad on the scales and then of course it's, it weighs it. And then of course it times out like instantly. So what you do, or what I'm gonna do is just lift it up in the back and set it down. That'll reset it. Take a picture of the weights. And then it actually did all four of them, but I wanna reset it cause it just timed out again. Do the same thing in the front. And now, in theory, if we add these up, we should have the weight. Okay, so here's what we got. The front left is 99.5, the front right 108.3, rear left 91.2, right rear 105.2. Uh, it seems like the left side has a little bit less weight than the right, and that's probably because that outside tire doesn't isn't quite uh, filled with air, so it's probably leaning to the one side. Uh, but regardless, the total weight was 404.2 which is probably pretty accurate. I know this isn't the most accurate way of uh, measuring with these scales, but uh, a stock Banshee, the dry weight is 386. 
and the wet weight is 405. So that's probably right on the on the, the money. If this tank was full, that'd probably be like another 10 pounds of gas. I'm not exactly sure how much that would weigh. So we'll just say with gas, it'd be 414, we'll say 415 pounds. So it's about 10 pounds heavier than a stock Banshee. That would make sense. We've got the extended A arms. We've got the heavy, heavy duty extended axle. We've got beadlock rims on there. We've got those heavy pipes. We've got the steering stabilizer. There's some extras on this thing. This thing probably would be heavier than a stock Banshee. So I actually think this is pretty accurate at 404.2. I also did the front and rear bias. You can see the front is 207.8. The rear is 196.4, 52% front bias. So that's actually one of the things that I want to fix on this Banshee is that the Banshee has a front end bias and they tend to have, just the front ends are heavier. So I have an antidote for that. We're going to get into that in a minute. And then I'd like to just overall make this thing lighter. I have no idea how much we can shave off of this thing. I mean, I'd love to make it like, I don't know, like 370 pounds, lose like 35 pounds. That would be crazy. I don't know if we can get that much off, but... I don't know, man, as you start taking things off, maybe we can do it. So I've been compiling parts. I've already got a number of stuff here. And this is all engine parts. And over here is chassis stuff. And of course, our climber service manual. You gotta have a service manual. And I have a whole buttload of parts coming from Rocky Mountain ATV that should be here tomorrow. That may or may not be in this video. Uh, but we're, I think I have about, I'd say about 90% of the parts are either here or ordered. And that is, Oh, I would say like 80% of the battle in rebuilding any machine is getting the parts. So we have almost everything, which is great. That's why I wanted to start this build. We've got enough stuff that I think we should be able to run through this build really quickly. Now, what I plan to do with this build, because I know you're all waiting, I want to do a trail banshee. So I know a lot of people want to see me do a drag banshee, and drag banshees are badass. I love drag quads in general, especially after meeting Dave Moore. Oh my God, dude. Once you read, run really fast machines, that's just awesome. But the thing is, Everybody does drag banshees. There's so many drag banshees out there. And if I try to build a super fast banshee, I'm sure I can build a super fast one, but I'm not going to be able to build the fastest, man. Hands down, you know, some of the quads that you guys build are, they're just the best, man. Some of the banshees that I see out on the dunes are crazy, dude. And they're, they're just excellent builds. And it's a shame because a lot of the people that build these things don't have a following and nobody ever really gets to see how amazing these machines are. But people just build the fastest quads and that's, dude, to their... That's, that's theirs, man. I give it to them. I can't build the fastest quads in the world, but I definitely think I could build a really nice trail machine, and that would be different. It's something that you just don't see too often, especially with the J-Arms. It'll be really un unique, and I love this Banshee, and I want to ride it more, and because it beats me up so much, I just don't ride it that much. So I'd love to make this thing... The, the goal is lightweight, fun, and longevity. And what I mean by longevity is I want to be able to hop on this thing and ride it for like hours and not get beat up. So I have multiple antidotes for this. So in order to overall reduce the weight, I'm going to be minimizing its footprint by one inch all the way around. So we're going to be one inch tighter in the rear. That's easily, I can easily adjust that axle. Um, we're actually going to be getting a new axle too. But those are extendable axles. They're actually adjustable. So that's easy enough to take care of. I also have new A-arms or J-arms on the way. They're being built by MTC. And instead of running the plus two, plus one, I am running plus one, plus zero. So it will be extended one inch, which is actually going to be in one inch from these plus twos. And instead of being plus one forward, it's going to be the stock plus zero. So it'll be minus one in the front, minus one on each side, and I'm getting a minus one swing arm being built by the swing arm shop to bring the back end in one inch also. So the overall footprint is gonna be smaller. That's gonna reduce the weight a little bit. And it's also gonna make it a little bit more nimble and reduce the turning radius. It should be pretty cool for the trails. I also like quads where the front end comes up a lot. And that's uh, this quad is no slouch in that category to begin with, but the minus one swing arm will make that happen even more. So that's gonna increase the fun factor. And there's a number of other little things that I'm gonna be doing to minimize the weight. The front bumper is this steel Duncan racing. I love that bumper, it looks great, but it is heavy, it's a steel bumper. So I'm gonna be putting probably an aluminum AC bumper on the front. We have the steel stock grab bar back here. I've got Wicked Metal Designs designing a custom grab bar. It's gonna be a drop grab bar. No, I don't think anybody makes a drop grab bar for the Banshee. Not that I know of anyway. So uh, we're gonna be working together to design one of those. I'll be sending him my OEM one and he's gonna be fabbing one up. I'm super excited for that. And it's gonna be made of aluminum, so it should be lighter than that stock one. I'm also going to be putting, from Wicked Metal Designs, I have these really nice foot pegs. I'll actually show them to you. They're freaking sick. Look at these things. Ow, dude, do you see that? These are sharp. These are the foot pegs, dude. These things are beast. 
Now these are gonna be heavier, because these are steel. These will be heavier than, than these aluminum parts, but the steel is in the rear. So I wanna make this have a 50-50 bias. And since we have that heavy bias in the front, about 10 pounds extra in front, putting the steel pegs in the back is actually gonna shift the weight backwards just a little bit. And I'm also going to be putting heel guards on here. And they're made of steel also. Now I'm gonna be replacing the Nerf bars too, but the Nerf bars are aluminum and the portion in the front is super light. So that setup should actually shift the weight to the back a little bit. Something else that's really heavy on this bike are these pipes. Like I said, these are super solid construction, but they are heavy pipes. I'm gonna be running CPI pipes. Now I've never actually felt CPI pipes to see how heavy they are, but I have a feeling that they're lighter than these. And also the silencers are definitely heavier on these SLPs. So the exhaust, we should lose a little bit of weight. We're running smaller cylinders. There's just little things like that that we're gonna be able to cut the weight. And I'm also going to be running traditional wheels in the front. Well, they're gonna be DWT rockouts. So I'm taking the bead locks off. They're just heavy, man. That's excess weight that we don't need in the front. And in the back, I'm going with carbon fiber bead lock rings on a set of GPS wheels. So those are gonna be really nice, but that's going to reduce the weight and especially in the front because we're getting rid of the bead locks. And what really is gonna make the front end a lot lighter is I'm switching these shocks out with Fox floats. Fox float shocks are super light. If you guys have ever had air shocks in your hand, Axis Pro Airs are super light and the Fox floats. I have them on the, the 250R, the RS2s. They're super lightweight, man. That alone is probably gonna save us, I don't know, like five pounds of shock. So that's probably like 10 pounds right there. The A-arms being a little bit smaller, that will shave a little bit of weight. And we're gonna be going with uh, all DRW skid plates across the whole thing. I'm not sure if poly, they're poly skids. I'm not sure if they're lighter than the aluminum or not. But that's my plan to reduce the weight on this thing. Put this thing back in here and let me show you these heel guards because I don't think anybody makes heel guards for the Banshee anymore. There was a company that used to make them. I think it was like RJS or something. I forget. You guys will have to let me know in the comment section below. But what I, these are YFZ 450R pegs that are made for LSR, like Pro Bounce, I think they are. They're Nerf bars. And they're gonna have to be custom fit. What I'm gonna do is I'll take the Nerf bars off and then I'm gonna fit these things up and I'm gonna customize these. The one on the right side, I'm gonna customize it so that it makes room for you to kick. Uh, Cause right now it would probably, your heel would probably hit back here. So I'm kind of happy that these are steel because I don't have the ability to weld aluminum, not at the house anyways. So I'm gonna cut these up and uh, we'll take the nets off of them of course and I'm gonna move this one section up top just back a little bit to make uh, accommodations for the heel. And between these, those Wicked Metal Designs pegs and a new set of Nerf bars, we should have a really nice set of foot pegs and they should be nice and grippy too. Now I have a bunch of stuff in here, but I think what I wanna do is hop over to the computer and show you guys the parts on there. And then as we build the machine, I'll actually show you. But just to give you a quick rundown because I know new parts are really cool, especially special parts. But we have uh, the heel guards, like I just said, we've got Intermosi thumb throttle right here in black. That's gonna be freaking sweet. I've got, these are new intake boots for larger carburetors, and I've got an air box right there. Oh, that's one of the other things that I'm gonna do. Right now I have pod filters on there, so I'm actually gonna be running an air box because this is gonna be a trail machine, and I've already sucked up water with this thing on the trails, and it just sucks. I wanna have an air box, and I wanna be able to smash puddles. So that's actually gonna add a little bit of weight, but again, that's on the rear. So we're gonna be shifting the weight bias to the back. So I forgot to mention that. But yeah, I have a brand new, this is actually an aftermarket airbox in here, uh, but I think it's a direct replica, probably a, a copy of the OEM. And I have a K&N filter lid right here. I've got a new carrier. We're gonna be switching to a roundhouse style instead of the traditional style. The aftermarket swing arm that I got takes a Honda carrier. So we've got that in there. I've got from Banshee Taco, down here, that's a carbon fiber tank cover. That's just a trick piece. I'm excited to show you guys that. And then I also have from Cascade Designs, we've got the pipe guards. These cover the portion of the pipes and stingers. So it keeps your, your fuel a little bit cooler. Uh, these are struts for drag racing. I'm not gonna be using those. I just have those in here. And then I've got my chain sliders right here. Got the crank. This is trued and welded and it's got a TZ bearing, a 10 ball on the one side. So that thing is ready to rock and roll. All the engine parts were sent to me by BP Racing. Uh, we've got the billet crossover right there. We've got our Wiseco pistons and this, oh, there's all kinds of cool stuff in here. 
Here's the uh, the filter for the air box. I'm just gonna put that over here for now. So check this out, dude. We've got the Alpha Cub. Oh yeah. Check these things out, dude. We'll go over these things in detail more when I actually work with these things, but I just wanted to show them to you. This is stock bore, stock stroke, but it's got cub porting, which is ultra aggressive when you compare it to stock. <whistles> Look at that, man. These things will make more power right out of the box than stock cylinders will. Look at the intake ports. Wow. I mean, dude, not even close to stock. And I'm gonna be doing a cleanup port on this, not actually opening the port windows or anything, but like little imperfections, like in here, I'm gonna smooth out the walls and it kind of casting imperfections. I don't know if you guys can see it in there. I'm just gonna clean up all that stuff and make all the ports nice and smooth. I'll probably do a little bit of opening up in the transfers, but we should get mad performance out of these. It's nice that it's a mono block instead of two separate cylinders. Super excited to run this. I know some people are gonna be like, oh, Ma, Mike, what are you doing, dude? Can't be going from a 421 to a 350. We're gonna be, we're probably gonna lose out on a little bit of power, but I don't think too much. So the, right now that 421 is set up for pump gas. It's like a lower compression setup, super reliable. It runs great. I haven't had any problems with it, but I think if we run this, these Alpha Cub cylinders, we clean up the ports, do high compression and run race fuel, we're gonna turn, we're gonna crank the timing all the way up and I'm gonna do a number of other mods. I think we're gonna be able to make some really good power. It's gonna be a lot better than what you guys think. And then with the, with the, with the weight reduction, I bet you it won't be that much different. I mean, that 421 hits hard, there's no doubt. There's, you, if you build a 421, you do all the mods that I'm gonna be doing to, the, to this Alpha Cub, 421's gonna walk it all day long. But because that's such a mild, like entry level 421, and we're gonna be doing a really high grade Alpha Cub 350. I think we're gonna be able to come close to matching the power, and it's a trail machine. So that, I think that should be perfect. I think it's gonna be more manageable power the way I'm building it. It's gonna have really nice power delivery, and it's, I'm just I'm super excited for it, man. And it's, oh, dude, with the CPI pipes, it's gonna be really pipey. It's gonna be cool, man, a lot of fun. All right, guys, let's hop over to the computer and we will go to our number one sponsor and that is eBay. Even though eBay isn't actually a sponsor, this is where I get a majority of my parts. So we're just gonna start right here. Um, I know a lot of people aren't able to afford to do these crazy builds. So my goal is to share the excitement with you guys. I wanna show you the, the uh, parts list that I made. It's actually really fun to pick out parts and put them in you know, add them in your cart and stuff. And then when you actually buy them and they show up and stuff, it's just really exciting. So that's my goal is to share this experience with you guys. So anyways, let's start at the top of the list. We might as well <laughs> hit it with one of the most expensive parts. So these are regular Fox floats. And the reason I chose these, first off, if you ever held a Fox float in your hand and then had a regular coil spring in the other, the Fox floats are super light. So since we're going for lightweight here, I felt like these would be perfect. And the other reason is because they're supposed to be great shocks. So I have the RC2 or RS2, I forget, on the uh, 250R, and those have the reservoir on the top and the bottom. Those things look super badass, but they're like double the price. These are only $650, and I talked to Rocket Run Suspension. He told me that these things are really good. So I'm gonna give them a shot. $650 is pretty affordable for front suspension. They come with a little air pump and everything. They're just supposed to be super adjustable. I had them shipped directly to Rocket Ron. He's gonna set them up for my weight. So that's what we're gonna do for suspension. And then I'm gonna send the OEM shock to Rocket Ron also, and he's gonna rebuild the OEM rear shock. Then moving out back, I got a minus one swing arm. Yep, a minus one on a Yamaha Banshee. Am I crazy? I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments section below. But this isn't gonna be a drag racing quad, so this should actually fit the bill. That minus one will give us a more nimble and tight turning radius. Plus, we're gonna lose a little bit of steel, so that should cut the weight slightly. I would imagine that this is a bit lighter than the OEM swing arm. The OEM swing arm is really beefy, man. Now, the other thing you'll notice is this has a roundhouse style swing arm uh, carrier holder. I don't exactly hate the Banshee carrier, but I think that the roundhouse style is better. I think it's easier to adjust the chain. So a lot of guys switch over to these. If you go to an aftermarket swing arm on a, on a Banshee, you'll see a lot of them offer the roundhouse style. They even sell just this roundhouse part that you can cut your stock swing arm and weld your own roundhouse carrier on there because guys just like it better. I think it's just an overall upgrade over the Yamaha version. So that will be the swing arm there. I think it's gonna be here in a couple weeks, so I'll be able to send that out for powder coating. Pretty excited to run that. And here is the carrier 
for that swing arm. You can see it's a roundhouse style. This is made specifically for the Yamaha Banshee. It comes with a brake stay and everything. It see you can see Yamaha Banshee roundhouse style axle bearing bearing carrier. And that's because, like I said, a lot of guys switch over to these things. It's really common that we do that. Then we have some stainless steel braided brake lines in blue. Nothing too exciting there. Got the DWT Rockout wheels. Going to be putting these in the front. I think these are, things are really trick, and they should be a little bit lighter than the bead locks that are on there now. I have these on the 250R, and I just really like the look of them. Then I have new chain sliders. Nothing too exciting there. That's just like an OEM upgrade. The material is supposed to last a little bit longer than OEM. 35 bucks. No big deal. Got the OEM style airbox. That's basically an OEM airbox. There's the filter. We've got a leaf blower. That's going to be a major upgrade right there. All right, so we're done with eBay. Let's move over to BP Racing ATV. This is where pretty much all my engine parts are coming from. So what I'm going to be running is the Alpha Cub cylinder. So this is the kit that's closest to the one that I'll be running. Mine I customized a little bit, but basically we've got the Alpha Cub cylinders. These are made by CPI and they come with a lifetime warranty on the cylinders, which is absolutely insane, especially for a two stroke, but they're Nicosil coated. So they're going to last a really long time. They've got cub porting and I'm expecting a lot of power out of these things, man. It's going to be a regular 350, but I just, I think it's going to be really good. comes with that hot rods crank that's trued and welded. We got the TZ 10 ball bearing, cool head, going to be running 17 CC domes, a performance clutch, got the billet impeller, the Wiseco pistons. I'm really excited to run this kit. Very complete. If you guys are looking for any parts, I would check out BP Racing. They just have so many kits. You can get customizable kits and stuff, and their, their kits are pretty affordable, man. That whole Alpha Cub set kit, is 1750. That's really not bad for a top and bottom end kit. Comes with bottom end bearings and everything too for your transmission at all. It's just, it's a good kit to go with. If you do decide to go with them, don't forget to use my promo code SABO10. It'll get you 10% off. And while we're on the engine, talk about exhaust real quick. These are CPI racing pipes. And unfortunately they don't make them anymore. I actually contacted CPI to see if they would make them for me. And they said that they're not, they're, they're discontinued. They're not making them for the Banshee anymore, which really sucks. But I got lucky. I put a post up on Instagram and a subscriber reached out. He had these things brand new in the garage and they're raw, which is actually what I want because I'm going to be coating these things black. So he's had these things sitting in the garage, literally collecting dust. He ordered them because he was waiting for his sniper pipes, which were on back order. And then the sniper pipes came in time and he never even ran these CPI pipes. So they're actually brand new and I got a crazy good deal on them. He hooked me up 600 bucks for these things. That is a great deal for CPI pipes. So I appreciate that, man. Thank you. All right, now we'll hop over to HSD Racing. We've got our GPR steering stabilizer. Right now I've got that Denton stabilizer on there, the stick style one. And dude, once you use a puck style like this, it's, it's like, I can't even say night and day difference. It's like... A stick style is like 10% as good as a puck. It really, there's like no comparison. They're expensive, $530, but for me, it's worth it. Once I rode with a precision, man, you just, I, I, don't, I don't think I would ever do a build without one of these, unless it's like a drag racing quad where you don't really need anything like that. But dude, these things are great and they help with fatigue tremendously. Next, I have J-Arms. They're made by, by MTC. My J-Arms are on there are great, but they're too wide and they're too far forward for what I want to run. These are plus one, plus zero. So they'll just be one inch wider than stock. These should be pretty cool. I'm hoping that the lead time isn't too crazy on them because I want to get them sent out for powder coat. Next, we'll go to the rear rims. These are also coming from HSD Racing. I went with GPR Victory Lock Wheels. These have a carbon fiber ring. And I'm going to guess, I couldn't find an exact weight on these things, but I'm going to guess they're on the lighter side for beadlock rims. So I like the look of these things. I've seen them in person. The, the carbon locks or the carbon beadlock rings are really thick. I just think it looks trick. So I got them. I'm going to do black on black. I'm not the biggest fan of colored rings. And then for tires, I'm going with Kenda Havoc mainly because they reached out to me and they wanted me to try them. So Kenda is hooking me up with these things. I'm super appreciative of that. And I'm very excited to try these things out, but these are actually going to be perfect for the build. So these are a six ply tire. So when we're going for weight reduction, it's not exactly the best thing, but since it's a trail machine and we're going to be hitting rocks and stuff, it's a trade off. So I'm not really sure that I would want to trade, you know, the ply size just for a couple pounds in weight. I think it's going to be worth having a little bit of a heavier tire and I'm already running six ply tires right now. So we're not exactly going to be gaining any weight. And also this is a harder uh, tread compound, which is what I want. So a lot of these softer tires that I run, like the Obors, um, those GNCC ITP tires that I put on the 400EX, those are great tires, but sometimes they hook almost a little bit too much. And in order to get the back end to break loose and, you know, whip around a corner or something, you really got to be putting down a lot of power. 
and these harder tires break loose a little bit easier, especially since we're reducing the footprint. I think it would be more likely to kind of want to, you know, roll in the corners. Whereas with these tires, I think it'll help it break loose a little bit better. So I'm excited to try these. And then from Hermosi, I got the 720 SBC bar clamps and these I got to feel on Pete Hager's quad and man, they are super soft. I didn't actually get to ride Pete's quad, but they felt really good. So I'm excited to try these things out. This is gonna help out with the whole longevity thing that I'm looking for. I wanna be able to ride my machine all day long and not be beat up at the, at the end of the day. And that is exactly what these things should enable me to do. So I'm really excited to run those. I actually have them and I got to look at them. They're, they're awesome. And then of course, I'm gonna be running an Hermosi throttle. Once I put the one on the Grape Ape, I don't think I'll ever have a quad and not put an Hermosi thumb throttle on there again. These things are expensive, but it's kind of like one of those products that will migrate with, from machine to machine. At least that's what I would do once you get one of these things. And you, if you're gonna sell your quad, I would take it off, put the OEM one back on, and then put this on your new quad. These things just feel great. If you have a chance to ride a quad with one of these things on, definitely try it out. I would look into these things, they're great. And then seat cover, I got covered by Four Works. I have this custom seat being made for me, and I'll show you my color scheme now. You'll see it fits perfectly. So here's my color scheme, and you can see that seat right there. And I struggled with this color scheme, man. I was bouncing around with all different colors and everything, but I landed on this. Uh, let me show you some of the colors that I was originally working with. And you'll see, man, <laughs> if you follow my Instagram page, I was posting some of these, man. Just, I was bouncing around so many different ideas. I just couldn't land on anything specifically. I was thinking about making it match the 250R. I had a darker color scheme to kind of match the 250R, like a more military thing. And the reason that I went with this color scheme, the primary thing was, you know, I made that complete build video on the Banshee and it really kind of like made me, you know, re-fall in love with the quad. And that quad basically started this channel. So if I went with the military color scheme, that's like nothing like the color scheme that's on there now. Now, granted, this is drastically different than what's on there now, but there's still like a touch of that quad in this. Like it's still, the original colors to some extent. You know, right now it's that blue and green. So it still has the touch of blue in there, the lime green, and then the black is just like the updated look. I feel like this is gonna look really trick and kind of set it apart. And it's not exactly, you know, I have, these are actually shearer pipes is which, what I was originally planning to run, but then I decided to go with the CPIs. I got the Fox floats up there. Of course, these ones have the reservoir. So, you know, these are the OEM tires. So it's not gonna look exact, but if you guys watch the Grape Ape series, my rendering for that was actually pretty spot on. I was kind of, it's kind of crazy how close these two look. I don't think it's gonna be quite as close for the Yamaha Banshee. I think this is gonna be a little bit different. And I think the one in person is gonna look a lot better. And here are the graphics that I designed. Yes, guys, I went with flames. You can hate me in the comments below, but I felt like it was just kind of fitting. It's, I went, I went more with like a ghost flame, kind of subtle. I've got all of the sponsors right here. Got the 350 twin. I know this is like, here, I'll flip this. You can see the back right there. I got Wicked Metal Designs on the back. And let me flip this thing here so you guys can see the tank a little bit better. That's what it's going to look like. You got 100K right there because this is kind of like a 100 subscriber, you know, like celebratory build. I just think, I don't know, man. I think this looks really cool. And I got my new logo right there. And I changed it from MS Speed to MS Design because a lot of people ask me, how I design these graphics or who designs my graphics. And, you know, so I figured I might as well kind of brand myself because I do design all of these myself. I make them in Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop. And a lot of guys ask me, they, they want me to put up like a tutorial video. Unfortunately, I don't know that I could really do that. I mean, I have like 12 years experience with these programs and it wouldn't take that long to figure out how to do this stuff. But, you know, I would almost have to have like a whole separate channel showing tips and tricks and techniques on how to do this kind of stuff. It's it's not the kind of program that you just pick up and you spend a couple of days with it and then you're proficient with it. It's it's a lot of work and a lot of it just has to do with your overall like art ability, really. So um, I know a lot of guys ask, they want me to make a video showing how I design this stuff. I just don't know that it's really feasible, especially not in like a, even like an hour long video, I really don't think I could show you how I do it in its entirety. Okay, so we got the design covered. The last thing I'll go over is my list. I just have, this isn't everything. There is some stuff missing on here, but I have most of my parts listed here. At the end of the project, I will have a complete breakdown with expenses and everything, but you can see we're at 9,000 bucks already. 
Whew. Man, it's hard reading that, but the good news is I do have a lot of sponsors helping me out, with, which helps soften the blow. But most of the stuff I'm paying for out of pocket and it, it can get expensive. And that's like I said, you know, I'm lucky enough to be able to build these things the way that I like to. So I'm hoping to share this experience with you guys. And there's also a number of stuff that isn't even on this list. One of the big things is bearings. So I have a huge box coming from Rocky Mountain ATV. They're hooking up bearings for the entire machine. And that adds up quick. So there's just a lot of really good stuff coming from Rocky Mountain. Super appreciative that they're hooking it up. And we will be getting into those parts as we get deeper into the build videos. All right, well, I'm about out of breath. So now you guys know the design plans and the build plans for Project Banshee 2.0. Let's get back to working on the bike. Now I'm itching to tear this thing down and send it off to powder coat. But before we do that, there's a couple of modifications that we have to do to the frame. So I'm gonna take the skid plate and the nerf bars off. Ooh. For some reason, when I take a skid plate off, I just feel like it's a breath of fresh air. There's always so much dirt and grit caked up under this and in between the frame. Like no matter how well you clean a machine, there's always dirt in there and it's just, it's like refreshing. I don't know if I'm the only one, or I'm probably the only one. Before we move on, I wanted to thank you for making it this far in the video. Let me know in the comments section below if you prefer the longer videos over the shorter videos. I also wanted to thank the sponsors that are helping Project Banshee 2.0 possible. As you guys see, there's a lot of expensive parts involved in this project, and I simply couldn't do it without these companies. Rocky Mountain ATV MC, BP Racing ATV, that is their new logo by the way, Kenda Tire, DRW Performance, Hermosi Throttles, Rocket Ron Racing, Bonehead Performance, SV Innovations, AP3 Racing, and Wicked Metal Designs. These are all companies that I trust and most of them I use on a regular basis. I also want to thank each and every one of you for helping me get to where I am with my YouTube goals. We're nearly at 100,000 subscribers. If you enjoy these videos and you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing. Thank you to everyone and now let's get back to the video. All right, now one of the first things I want to do is fit up these heel guards while we still have everything on because I want to make sure that these are going to fit. So right about there is where they'll sit. I'm gonna mark on the peg for the holes. Well, that's actually quite solid, just like that. But I want to mount it to the frame, and you can see kick would be an issue. So my plan is to cut it right here, and right here, and then move this whole section back. And then I'm gonna weld a rod connecting it, and then extend the tube down here. And then the net, I will stitch in more of these. I think it'll actually be pretty clean. It sounds it sounds like it's gonna be hack, but I think when it's all together, it's actually gonna look really good. And then when I bring this section back, I'll make a, um, a tab on the frame to bolt right up to this. And that should be a good solid heel guard.
Is it uglier than your in-laws, baby, that they never stop talking about? Absolutely. Will it hold forever? Damn straight. And really, that's all that matters. Let's put this thing on there and see if it fits. I think it's gonna fit well. I think this is actually gonna work. It looks pretty good. And the nets are gonna work out too. So um, this one I'm gonna bring up here and I made this little loop John right here. I made this with hand tools, it's pretty crude. It was not fun to make, but I'm gonna mount this under here and I'll, I'll put that one right there. And then I'm just gonna sew another strap right here that'll mount back here. And then I think what I'll do is that same strap will come down here. I may make another loop kind of like these ones just so that I can put a strap basically from here all the way up to here. And that'll make it really nice and secure. And then up here for this mount, I was originally, you can see I actually cleaned the frame off right here. I was gonna weld to this and make a bracket right here. But I think it'll actually be easier to abandon this and cut that off and make a tab that just comes straight up and mounts to this existing point because this is a really solid mount right here. And then we're not making even more brackets to the frame. So that'll be nice and solid. It'll be straight up and down so that it'll be nice and strong for any force being pushed down on this net. So once I do all that, it'll just have to be powder coated and we'll put everything in place. I'm gonna hop on real quick and see if this uh, clears when I kick this. All right. Oh man, these pegs feel good. Should be good. Seems like my foot clears it. It's not perfect. I mean, I don't think any heel guards are completely clear, but that should work just fine. Should be good to go. Okay guys, there they are. They're all done. They actually fit pretty nice. And they're really tight too. You can shake the quad by them. They're nice and strong. Good fit and finish. You can see this other tab that I put on right here. That came out nice. I have the other, this tab back here. And I even put these little tabs on the back to mount the plastics. And you can see this is the tab that mounts to the frame. I chopped off the one that came with them. I actually think that looks pretty good. Once they're powder coated, I think it's gonna look great. And then this side's done too. This one, instead of going up here, it made more sense to go right to the frame here. There was already a hole in this gusset. So that's a, that's a nice point. And I, I, the shortest I could make this piece, the stronger it's gonna be. If I made one back here, it would've had to come back and up. So this was the shortest route. And I thought that was just a little bit cleaner. And then of course I have this tab welded back here as well. And then in here, you can see there's little washers that space this out. I put a little tack on each side too. So every time you take this apart, you don't have to you know, hold those washers in place. So these are done. They're, they're good to go. Uh, the one net on this side, I don't need to do any modifications. This one over here, I'm just gonna have to uh, sew um, an extra strap on. That really shouldn't be too difficult to do. But the important part is we can send this out for powder coating. It actually wasn't that hard to do. It's uh, probably took a couple hours. And if you have basic hand tools and a decent welder, you could do this too. You could have Banshee heel guards as well. So there's one other thing that I wanna do to this frame before we send it out for powder coating. My uh, incredibly smart self a couple years ago chopped the mounts off for the airbox. And of course we're gonna be running an airbox. So I can actually, at least on the one side, I can feel, I think it's right here. I can feel where the tab went. That's gonna help out a little bit. And then uh, there's little pegs that go in the front here. 
if you're a Banshee guy, you probably know what I'm talking about. They hold the air box in place. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna fit the air box in there and uh, kind of mock it up. And I have to weld those tabs in place too. And I may have to take my exhaust off here. This uh, SLP exhaust was not air box friendly. Oh, you just cooperate. There we go, that wasn't too hard. So I got the air box in there and we were presented with an unfortunate problem. I'm actually recalling this from the first time that I built this engine. The air box is sitting back further than it normally would. The stock location is further forward. Oh geez. Uh, the reason that it's sitting back further is because of the engine setup. And I'll explain that in a second here. We have the billet intake block that pushes it back like, I don't know, inch, inch and a half. And the carburetors I believe are a little bit bigger than the stock carburetors. So all of that stuff moves the intake boots back. So the whole carburetor is way back. Now you can actually see where the stock locations are. If you come in here, right there, if this camera will focus down there, I don't know if I'm gonna get it, but way up here is where the stock location is. And those, those locations come straight out and they're supposed to go in these grooves right here. So, oh man, this thing is just not cooperating. But you can see how far back that is. I mean, it's literally like an inch and a half, to maybe even, like I said, two inches. All right, what the f But yeah, for that reason, it doesn't make sense to weld tabs in place. And I could, I could make tabs that, that fit where this is located now, but we're switching up the setup. We're gonna have a di we're gonna have different cylinders first off, different carburetors, and we may be using a different billet block. So to put those tabs on there and weld them up, it just wouldn't make sense, man. We don't even know where this box is gonna be sitting. So unfortunately, I'm probably gonna send the frame out the way that it is and get it powder coated. And when it comes back, this may end up being a zip tie job. Mickey Mouse, but not really. Um, you can see how easily this thing would mount up. We've got these things right here and you could zip tie it no problem. Or what I can do is like a P-clamp, an upside down P-clamp on the frame and bolt it to it. And that would actually be pretty strong. I will find a way to support everything and make it so that it works. Uh, if I have to, I'll just grind off some of the powder coat and weld tabs on once we get it done. The right way would be to remove the engine, build the engine, put the engine in place, and then measure and weld the tabs in place. But I don't want to wait 38.629 years to get this thing done. I want to do it now. So this is just how it's going to have to be. So that could be a major headache down the road, but we're going to do the right thing and just pretend that we didn't even see that. And in the meantime, I have to clean up this huge mess that I've made. And then we're going to strip this thing down so I can send it out for powder coating. What I like to do is I usually start by draining the fluids. I pull the plugs so that way they can drain while I'm getting all the other stuff off. And by the time I get to the engine, it's ready to rock and roll. Banshees always make a mess, man. Oh, why is that so tight? It's actually clean. I just went outside to grab the mail and it's 48 degrees outside. Yesterday it was like 10. Why? I don't know, but I'm gonna take advantage of this and before I go any further, I'm gonna uh, just clean this chassis down in the engine. I already blocked off my carburetors and I might even clean up some of this stuff. The time is of the essence. Let's get to it. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how well this thing cleaned up? I mean, check this thing out. It's certainly not brand new, uh, but realistically, this thing cleaned up really nice. All of the billet parts basically look brand new. Like, seriously. I don't know what this is. I don't know if that's soap or what. Um, that could probably be, probably be cleaned up better. But the frame, I think it's just like a testament to that spray paint job. A lot of people told me, you know, they didn't think this thing was gonna last. I think it looks really good. It's really clean. You know, granted, I'm not racing the thing, but I'd say it has a solid 40 hours on it at least, and it sleeps outside. I mean, it's not 
a babied quad, and again, ridden in the coal mines. So you can see the, the swing arm's definitely still stained, but check this out. I think this could actually clean up and look like new again. If you look up here, I, I just, I didn't spend all the time in the world cleaning this, but like this stuff, I think you can get off. You can see it scratches away. So that, I could, that I could actually probably be cleaned up. I don't know, man, I'm sure under the engine, it doesn't look quite as good. This is like from splooge from the exhaust. It's really crusty. I don't know if that will ever be clean without, you know, giving it a new coating and all. It's all over here. That's just like uh, exhaust stuff. But it just, it's just, I'm really surprised. Up here, um, it flaked off. These must be made of stainless or something. I don't know what these A-arms are made of, but they don't rust, it doesn't look like. But yeah, it flaked off around there. But just an overall really good condition. All right, now this could be a challenge. My shoulder's still healing, so I can do normal things as you can see, but heavy stuff, I don't know. So I'm gonna try shimmying this engine. As long as I keep my arms close to my body, I think I'll be okay. And at worst, I'll just have to recruit some help, but let's see if we can get this thing out of here. I think if I take this case saver off, it can move around a little bit easier. Work smarter, not harder. Perfect. Oh, success. We did it. So for those who don't know, I just had my shoulder repaired. I had a complete tear in my left rotator cuff. It's been about five weeks. So I'm still kind of taking it light, but I am recovering really quickly, which is awesome. So that's why I had to do that the way that I did. It was kind of weird grappling with that. But speaking of working smarter and not harder, check the stand out. Now that we've lost a little bit of weight, we can actually lift this thing up because the stand has a capacity of 300 pounds. It's actually made for dirt bikes, but it can do some quads if it's a really light quad. The Banshee was too heavy though. It was, what were we, 404 pounds. It's definitely way under 300 pounds now though. But this is a sweet ass stand though. It's a scissor stand that goes up and it has these latches that you can hook onto the pegs so that it's nice and solid. So when we're working on this thing, we don't have to worry about it falling off. The scissoring action on this thing though, is just awesome. <laughs> scissoring action. But, <laughs> but you can lift stuff up so that it's at like a comfortable height to work on. And it's just really nice. Now that we've got this thing up in the air, I can go around and feel for any play. And I noticed there's play in like all of the bearings. The upper J arms have play. The lower, oh, we got a little bit of play back here and this one, steering is still tight. The axle though, the carrier bearings are definitely shot. And I noticed the wheels were actually loose. There was a couple loose, I don't know if it's the, it's the, uh, it's the lug nuts. A couple of the lug nuts were actually loose. The last time I had this thing out, I was actually ripping it pretty hard. So that's probably why. But yeah, this, uh, the carrier bearings definitely need to, be, need to be replaced. It feels like the swing arm bearings are okay. We're gonna be replacing all that stuff regardless. And the linkage, it's hard to tell because the axle's got play, but all that stuff is gonna be replaced. I'll show you guys a problem that I've had with this since the beginning. These hubs, all of the studs are actually loose. You can see them wiggling. Some are worse than others. The back are the worst because they spin. And getting these things, you can see how wallowed out that is. I mean, that's these are unusable. 
even if you got new studs. Like, I don't even think the splines are bad. No, they, they look like they are a little bit worn, but even with new splines, that's too wallowed out. It's time for new hubs, front and rear. They're all, they're toasted. So that's gonna be another upgrade, and I think I'm gonna get some LSR hubs. Lightweight, billet aluminum. Something I've never actually had before. Thank you to Rocky Mountain ATV for hooking that up. Yep, that was loose. Oh, studs fell right out. Wow, look at that. Split all the way along that seam. This was a brand new XFR skid plate when I got it. All right, so we got a C's swing arm bolt, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem because we did get it to move. You can see, it's I got it like, I don't know, quarter of an inch there to move. Usually once it gets going, you're good to go. But there's no use fighting it, so what I did is I tilted it to its side and I got the PB blaster doing the work for me. So I shot some, some PB blaster in there and it should work its way into there. I'm gonna stop at this point because I've basically achieved everything that I wanted to do. I really wanted to get the rear shock off so I can send that out and I wanted to get the grab bar off so I can send that out to Wicked Metal Designs. Uh, so he's gonna be designing that drop grab bar that I was talking about. And like I said, you might as well, we'll let the oil do the work. We'll, we'll call this done, man. The thing is torn down. Everything's in pieces. I'm amazed how well this stuff cleaned up. And we could definitely say, oh, the other thing was, I can't find my ball joint splitter. So I don't know, I'm gonna either have to find that or buy a new one, but I left the spindles on there. Everything's torn down though. I think we did a pretty good job. And there is the heart of the Banshee, the 421. I may not even have to vapor blast this thing. The cases might actually clean up really good. We'll see what it looks like. We'll be tearing into that in a future video. So Project Banshee 2.0 is well underway. We're gonna move through this thing super quick, man. I wanna use this thing this season. I can't wait to ride this thing. I'm just like super excited for the plans. You guys let me know in the comment section below. What do you think of the plans that I have for this thing? Should I have left it the 421 or made it even bigger? Or do you think I'm moving in the right direction? This is gonna be a cool build. I don't know. Everybody's got a different opinion. You guys can let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that big time. And also consider subscribing. We're almost at 100 thousand subscribers like i don't know dude i'm gonna say next week we hit 100 000 subscribers we're that close we're we're almost at like 97 000 right now i can't believe how much support you guys have been given i mean this is like a dream come true man 100 000 subscribers is a huge goal of mine and it's it's just it's a it's a privilege, man, and it's a pleasure. I'm really glad that all you guys can be a part of it. So I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to uh, say thank you to all the new people as well. A lot of new, I'm seeing a lot of new comment or new, a lot of new commenters in the comment section and stuff. So I appreciate everybody. So um, consider hitting that subscribe button and also consider the join button if you're looking to uh, help the channel even further. And if you ordered a 2021 blackout T-shirt, I haven't received them yet, but I did order them. So I had to order those after the pre-sale, and then they're coming to me, and then I'm shipping them out. But they will be out as soon as I get my hands on them. They'll be in the mail, man. So I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.